Good afternoon, Madam President. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, like Senator Suzio just mentioned, uh, I do thank uh, the state employees for coming to the table to work uh, with our governor uh, to try and fashion a response to a financial issue that we have before us. And I certainly believe and support the idea uh, that our, govern uh, our government needs to work collaboratively with their employees so that we can maintain and improve the quality services that our constituents uh, demand of their government. But I'm not sure that the, pr the, the proposal before us is the answer to that issue that we have. What we're trying to fix with this, I'm going to say refinancing agreement, is a four to six billion dollar problem that's going to be here in 15 years. And one of the things that went through my mind initially was, why now? Why does it have to happen today? And I never really got a good answer. Because quite frankly, there are other issues that are just as important, if not more so, and are just as financially troubling. And yet, in the six years that I've been here, I haven't really seen the focus that's needed to be placed on the issue. As a co-chairman of the Aging Committee, and for the past six years as a ranking member, I have put forward initiative after initiative to deal with an issue called aging in place. I've put that initiative forward because People in Connecticut want to age in their home, which is what they want, it's less expensive, and better. The demographic today is that 14% of our population is over the age of 65. We're spending greater than 10% of our state budget on that in regards to aid to uh, nursing facilities, which is roughly $2.8 billion annually. We know that baby boomers moved into retirement two years ago. And in the next 15 years, they'll be over the age of 65. One-third of Connecticut is a baby boomer. One-third. So if we take the 14 that's already there, we know the fastest aging area is people over the age of 80. And you bring in a third of Connecticut. Can we sustain and pay to triple or double that 2.8% $2.8 billion appropriation? The answer is no. And those numbers are going to be in the same range as 5 to $6 billion. So why isn't that being dealt with today? Why aren't we looking at those numbers? That's a fiscal cliff that's going to come because the demographic is aging. God knows we'd like to stop the clock on aging, but that's not going to happen. We know that. But this, this demographic, if we don't deal with our aging in place initiatives and start to put in, in place the right policies, we're going to have another problem in 15 years. And I want to know when we're going to start dealing with that issue. Because that's just as important. The only difference is the proposal before us, the pension refinancing agreement, basically just smooths out what the state has to pay today and puts it on the backs of our children in future generations. We have a four to six billion dollar problem and what is before us is an eleven billion dollar solution. I'll state that again. We got a four or six billion dollar problem with an eleven 
billion dollar solution and we wonder why the state is in a financial mess. This is why we're in a financial mess. Plain and simple, we're paying two to three times what we should. And this doesn't have to happen today, and it's not the only way to do it. There are other ways to get to where we need to be, but they're not before us today. So as a parent, I didn't run for this office to put the burdens, the financial burdens of today on the backs of my kids or the kids of the families of Connecticut. I cannot and I will not do that. Our kids deserve better. Thank you. Thank you, Senator.